This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 2.11. These problems will give you practice on substitution and elimination reactions of alcohols. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these type of problems can be found in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018 in Lesson 2.11. You can also find additional chemistry videos and information on how to match those videos up with your particular course's textbook at ProtonGuru.com. This first question is asking us to provide the major product or products of the reaction shown and to provide a reasonable arrow pushing mechanism to show how those electrons will flow to form the major product. We have the second part of the question asking us what product we would get if we replaced the hydrobromic acid with sodium bromide as well. So the first thing we need to figure out is what kind of reaction this is. First we need to recognize that we have a strong acid and an alcohol. And a strong acid is effective at activating an OH group which is itself a poor leaving group so that it becomes a oxonium intermediate. And that's a coordination step known as a protonation. And when you have a secondary site now that has a good leaving group right here if this leaves its water, we should expect an SN2 type reaction to take place. And that's how we get to our final product. Now what if we were to use sodium bromide? If we think back, we won't have the H plus here if we use sodium bromide. We'll have a sodium cation there instead. Now the OH is a bad leaving group unless you activate it. Here we use the H plus, the proton from the acid, to activate it. So no reaction is going to take place if we use sodium bromide. Sodium is a spectator ion that will not be good at activating to create the beginning point for this reaction. Now what if we're asked the same exact question but we change our acid from hydrobromic acid to sulfuric acid? Well now what kind of reaction is it? Well we see we have a strong acid and we know that that's good at doing a coordination to the oxygen. So we have the same first step and then we have heterolysis to form a carbocation in this case. Well that's different from the step we saw in the first reaction where we had bromide that came in. Here we don't have bromide. Instead we have the anion resulting from deprotonation of sulfuric acid. Well if we draw out the Lewis structure of that conjugate base of sulfuric acid, we see that it's really bulky. It's got all these groups with lone pairs. So it's a terrible nucleophile. So we can't do an SN2 reaction like we could with a good nucleophile bromide we saw in the previous question. So this intermediate species with the good leaving group will sit there until heterolysis takes place to lose water. And then we have a carbocation. Well, in the absence of a good nucleophile, we know that the only thing that a carbocation can do is either rearrange or undergo electrophilic elimination. And here I'm showing a pair of electrons coming from between the carbon and hydrogen, that bond. We're going to put those two electrons in here to make a second bond. That's an electrophilic elimination because we've eliminated a electrophilic species. And by doing so, we'll get this alkene. Now the last part of this question that's new for this problem is what step in your mechanism is the rate determining step? So if we look back at this, we see that one of these steps creates a species where one of the atoms has fewer than an octet of electrons. And that step is right here, the heterolysis to form the carbocation. So the carbocation formation is the rate determining step for this reaction. This is an E1 type reaction. Here's a similar question asking us to provide the major product and to provide a reasonable arrow pushing mechanism for this. And again, we see a strong acid with an alcohol. So we start off with the same first two steps we saw when we used sulfuric acid. We see coordination, as with any strong acid with the alcohol. That forms the oxonium intermediate, which can then undergo heterolysis because again, we don't have a good nucleophile. If we drew out the Lewis dot structure for this conjugate base from phosphoric acid, we would see that it's also very bulky. Now we have this carbocation. Remember the two things that a carbocation tends to do are either have coordination of some nucleophile, and we don't have a good nucleophile here, or it can have rearrangement occur, or you could have an electrophilic elimination. Well, anytime you make a carbocation intermediate, you've got to check to see whether rearrangement will happen because that's very quick compared to other steps. Now the quick way to assess whether a carbocation will rearrange will be to first label what the substitution is at that site. It starts off being secondary and just look right beside it. It's not going to rearrange to something where the plus charge moves further away than the carbon right beside it. So it wouldn't gain any extra stability by moving to a different secondary position, but it would be more stable if I moved it to a more substituted site. So the next step is going to be carbocation rearrangement. And this rearrangement has to take place by moving one of the two methyl groups from that quaternary carbon to the site beside it to yield this carbocation that's now rearranged. Now it's more stable because it's tertiary having started out as secondary. So that's a spontaneous step. 
Once we've rearranged the most stable carbocation we can attain, then we have the electrophilic elimination where this proton dumps its two electrons from this bond into here, the space. Two electrons dumped into that space will lead to sharing of those two electrons here to make that second bond. So this is again an E1 reaction that involved a carbocation rearrangement in the course of the mechanism. So now we've seen a couple examples where strong acids are used to activate this poor leaving group to make it into a good leaving group. Well, what about using some other reagents with alcohols that are not strong acids? Here we're asked to provide the major product if we use phosphorus tribromide instead of a strong acid. Well, what kind of reaction is this? What kind of reaction is mediated by phosphorus tribromide? Well, phosphorus tribromide is generally used as an alternative to a strong acid for activating the OH group. And in the course of doing so, you'll produce a Br minus. The Br minus then undergoes an SN2 type reaction with the alcohol. There's no possibility for rearrangement of a carbocation because the SN2 reaction is a concerted mechanism. So we would expect the net reaction to be replacing this OH group with a bromo group. And the SN2 reaction, remember, leads to inversion of configuration, what we call Walden inversion. So instead of a wedge here, we're going to have a hash line with a bromine in place of the OH. Here's a similar question. And here we're using thionyl chloride instead of phosphorus tribromide. Well, what kind of reaction is this? We have to recognize when we see thionyl chloride, SOCl2, that it's yet another way to activate the OH to be a good leaving group. And in this case, the nucleophile we produce by attaching the O to the sulfur instead of the chlorine is we get a chloride. That's going to be our nucleophile. The net result is very similar to what we saw with phosphorus tribromide. We activate the OH, this time using the thionyl chloride, then we're going to have the SN2 reaction. The product, of course, leads to Walden inversion at the site where the SN2 reaction took place. The SN2 reaction took place at this carbon. No reaction took place at this carbon. No rearrangement of bonds took place there. So we see inversion of configuration where the SN2 reaction took place. No reaction took place at this stereocenter, so it retains its configuration. So now that we've had some practice with looking at different reagents reacting with alcohols and determining what type of reaction could take place at these centers, we can figure out which of these types of substrates reacts fastest with, in part A, sulfuric acid, or part B, thionyl chloride. So we have to ask ourselves, well, what kind of reaction is it when we use sulfuric acid? What kind of reaction is it when we use thionyl chloride? Well, the acid, sulfuric acid, is good at activating the OH to be a good leaving group, as we've seen, but then there's no nucleophile. We saw in our previous examples that this leads to an E1 type reaction taking place. If, on the other hand, we use thionyl chloride to activate the OH, we know that in the course of that reaction, if you look back at the mechanism, you produce a chloride. That will lead to an SN2 reaction shown here. So the question now is really asking us which reaction is fastest for E1 and which reaction is fastest for SN2. Well, in one of our previous problems, we saw that the rate limiting step that determines how fast an E1 reaction can take place is the formation of the carbocation. The most stable carbocation will form faster. We know the SN2 reaction from previous lessons is fastest when you have less bulk around the site you're trying to attack. It's harder for a nucleophile to get in between these branches than to simply attack a primary substrate, for example. Now one thing that might be helpful is to dry out this phenyl group. If you don't know, the phenyl is an abbreviation for this arene, this benzene ring, as a phenyl substituent. And that can help us assess the stability of these different species. If we're trying to find the most stable carbocation after the OH was to leave, you'd form a carbocation there that would be secondary, here that's primary, here that's tertiary, or here that's also tertiary. We can see when we draw it out like this beside the phenyl group that there is resonance stabilizing that tertiary carbocation. That allows us to assess that this substrate would be the best for the E1 reaction, which is the answer to part A of the question. The primary alcohol would be best suited for the SN2 reaction, the answer to part B, because you have the least steric bulk around that carbon to be attacked by the nucleophile. Now as you go through your study of organic chemistry, you'll be faced with these reaction sequences, or reaction strings as some people call them. So we're going to incorporate some reaction of alcohols with a reaction we saw earlier in our organic studies. So here we're asked to provide the major product for each step of the reaction sequence shown. So we look at the first step where we have tosyl chloride and pyridine, and we ask ourselves, well, what kind of reaction is that? Well, the purpose of the tosyl chloride is simply another way to activate this OH group to make it into a good leaving group. In this case, it'll be a tosylate group. One of the common mistakes people make 
as students of organic chemistry when they see this reaction is they might think that the chlorine replaces the OH, but it doesn't when you have the tosyl chloride. Sometimes people confuse this with thionyl chloride. If you have thionyl chloride with two chlorines, you have one chlorine to take the hydrogen off of the oxygen to make HCl, and since there are two, you still have a chlorine to attack to replace the O. But in tosyl chloride, there's only one chlorine. So once you make that HCl, which is then neutralized by the pyridine, you don't have another chlorine to replace the O. So this reaction stops after the H is replaced by the tosyl group, and the H has come off the oxygen with the chlorine. So don't confuse tosyl chloride with thionyl chloride that we saw in our previous problems. Also, we didn't do a reaction at this carbon yet. We only reacted the oxygen. So this carbon keeps its configuration. Of course, we did nothing to this carbon either. So both of those carbons have the same configuration as they had in the starting material. So having figured that out, what reaction is the next step? Well, we've got a good leaving group, and we've got this ionic species that we'll separate into the sodium plus and Cn minus. Well, when there's a good leaving group on a secondary carbon and a good nucleophile that is a weak base, we should observe an SN2 reaction. Since we now have change responded to the carbon by an SN2 pathway, that carbon's configuration is inverted by the so-called Walden inversion. So that's why we drew this wedge becoming a hash line when we substitute the tosylate with the sign. Now you can create ever longer strings of reactions to analyze, such as the one shown here. Now we have three steps instead of two. And you've always got to ask yourself, well, what kind of reaction is each step? If we go ahead and label those, and you sit back and think, maybe pause the video, you can figure out that this is an SN2 reaction, because you've got a primary site with a good leaving group, and you have a good nucleophile here. The tosyl chloride with pyridine, we've only seen that in the context of making OH into a good leaving group. And then once you have something with a good leaving group here, we can see that we have a good nucleophile. You can confirm that by drawing out its Lewis structure. Something with a good leaving group, good nucleophile, weak base, should do an SN2 reaction. So next we go through and fill in the products of each of these types of steps. Well, our first step is an SN2 reaction. So we replace the good leaving group with the good nucleophile. The next step is to turn that OH into a good leaving group. So we turn this OH into the tosylate good leaving group. Finally, we need to displace this leaving group with the anionic part, the N3 minus, of that ionic compound. And that's how you get this final species. We didn't change any bonds to this carbon, which had a chiral center there. So it retains its configuration throughout the course of the reaction.